How's everyone doing? I'm Nini FC, this is Blue Lines TV, and you guys, I'm bringing you another transfer daily video. I'm going to be talking about Morata, I'm going to be talking about Jeremy Boga, Pasalic, and a few of the boys have left on loan as well. But you guys, today's video is brought to you by Football Coin. Football Coin basically is a cryptocurrency where the players you buy and sell obviously earn towards a value which you can use to reinvest in your team, or you can even cash out yourself to earn a bit of money sign up for free to get an idea of how things work i'm going to show you the basics of how to play now here you guys can see the main page that i'm on the thing that you need to do is join a contest now i'm going to be joining the group g contest because of course england are playing against belgium now once you join a contest this is the fun part where you get to pick the formation you want and the players you want to fill that formation you can see here there's a list of formations here. Obviously, I'm looking at the back three. I, I keep getting memories of Conte and suffering, so I'm going to be going for the sorry ball formation here, 4-3-3. And from here, I can pick the forwards, midfielders and players I want. For example, I click on a forward player here. It gives me a list of all the players uh, that will be playing in the Group 3 games tonight. You can find some free options as well. To give you guys an example, I'm going to pick on Kazari here. And now he's in my team. Now, as you guys can see, this is the first 11 team that I have picked. And don't forget, you also have to pick your sub bench and your assistant manager as well. Now, I've got everything ready. I click finish team. Here's the thing. These are free players, meaning that you're not going to earn anything on them. To earn, you'd have to spend money on players. Spend time picking your team because this is how the value rises for the players that you buy. It's the current match day form that does affect some of the value for the players as well. The better a player does, the more his value is going to rise. And from then on, you can either decide to buy more or to sell. As I said, you guys, click in the description below if you want to sign up to this. Starting with the first story of today's video, and that's in regards to Alvaro Morata. Now, reports have come out from David Amayal. If you guys don't know who he is, he is a journalist. He does have a fantastic podcast with Alex Goldberg, Couchio Land Podcast. It's amazing. You guys definitely listen to that. And he is someone that does hear information as well. So when he does hear something and confirm something, it's normally 100%. Now, you guys, he did come out today stating that Murata has officially stated that he does want to leave Chelsea and Chelsea want between 65 to 70 million pounds. Now, that's literally the story at this moment in time. I'm going to be giving you guys my thoughts and opinions. Now, let's be serious. I think a lot of us already expected this to happen. I think with this story coming out, it's the fact that it's an official confirmation. Now, yes, I do know some people that are close to David, so they told me that when he is confirming something like this and even putting it on Twitter, then this is 100% the truth and I do believe them and I do trust them. But I mean, there's been so many indications that he'd want to leave. I mean, you guys, the last Murata video I brought out, his friend, the Italian rapper, when they had the wedding, basically stated that Murata told me that I would happily come back to Italy and I would take lower wages. Now, why would you make something like that if you aren't interested in leaving to go back to Italy? There's literally no other way to take a statement like that from Murata. And let's not forget too the reports that have been coming up from Italy from Inter Milan, AC Milan and from Juventus. But there's one thing that all the reports have been sharing and that's the fact that there's a massive possibility that Chelsea will be looking to send him on loan as well as the club then buying him at the end of that loan spell. We've done that before with Juan Cuadrado. Chelsea aren't opposed to doing that, especially as a lot of Serie A teams are very open to deals like that. And the reason as to why I personally feel too, you know, basing my opinion and all the reports that have been coming up, is the fact that Chelsea wouldn't be able to command 65 to 70 million pounds from Morata right now. Number one, he isn't at the World Cup. That means that Chelsea have no basis to really say why they demand the price that they're setting for Morata. And the second reason is the fact that his season hasn't been too great, so clubs won't be spending that type of money just like that. As I said, I think it makes sense to see a similar situation with Cadrado and a similar situation with Torres as well. He'll go on loan, the club will get money for the loan fee, there'll be a wage contribution from that loan e club as well, and then there'll be a set price agreed upon. And I think that's the best, most affordable way that Chelsea would be able to get close to the money that they spent on Morata. Now you might be thinking, why does Morata want to leave, especially when there's a new manager coming in? But you guys, I think it's purely a personal decision. Not only is it based on what his family would like and what's best for them, but also for himself as well. You know, as I've been saying all the time, you know, this guy's constantly going to Italy 
all the time. The reports have been saying this as well. All of his friends and family are there. He's come out in numerous interviews talking about his love for Italy, the time he had there, the culture, the city, the fashion, the weather. And this is just my personal take as well. But on top of everything I've said, I think it's the fact that him and his wife are expecting to have a kid very soon. You know, he officially is a family man now. He does have a family. Yes, he is young, he's in his mid 20s. But when things like this happen, you do become more assertive and you think about what's best and you think about long term future. So it makes a lot of sense as to why he'd want to move back to Italy with his family as well. Do I think it's down to the pressure he couldn't handle at Chelsea? I definitely don't think so. I mean, if you play for Real Madrid, there's much more pressure playing for Real than Chelsea. That's just, you can't doubt that. You can't argue against that. And he's played for Juventus as well. And he's played in a lot of high pressure games. So I don't think it's the strongest of excuses. Still, again, who knows? With football, this stuff changes all the time. There's so many 11th hour decisions every single time. What if Sari then spoke to him and was like, actually, Murata, I would like you to stay and here's why, blah, blah, blah. Maybe that could persuade Murata to change his mind. But as I said, that's only a hypothesis I'm having at this moment. Now, for this part, I'm going to speculate on where I think his most realistic option is in terms of signing for a new club. Now, look at AC Milan. Now, these guys have been banned from Europe for the next two seasons. So I'm not going to expect Morata to go there because, again, no Champions League football, no European football. Inter Milan, it's an option that's been spoken about beforehand. I've spoken about this a lot on my channel. Again, I think that would depend on if Akadi does decide to leave Inter. But with the investment, uh, with the great signs that Inter are making recently, you know, they're in the Champions League again for next season. I think Inter are looking to spend big so they can continually keep getting in the Champions League. And if Akadi's there, they've got no need for Val Morata. So realistically, the only option is Juventus at this moment in time. And there could actually be some positives coming out from this. Now, we do know that Juventus are interested in Anthony Martial now. Let's say they do sign Morata. They're not going to need to sign Martial afterwards. That's going to take up a lot of their budget to sign a player like that. Morata would ideally like to go back to Juventus. Of course, he's played there already. Had an amazing time there as well. It makes a lot of sense. And who knows, these reports of Higuain keep intensifying a lot all the time. Could there be a possible swap deal as well? Who knows? But you guys know my opinion, you know, I have sympathised with Murata, of course, with his injuries. His back strain, which a lot of people didn't take seriously. And it's just like, maybe people just haven't had back injuries before. But can you imagine playing as a target man? Where you're playing with your back to goal constantly, where your back is killing you. I get back problems sometimes just sitting down. My back gets really sore. So I can't imagine what it would be like having someone that's like nearly 200 pounds running in behind you to try and win a header. You know what I mean? I just think that, uh, I think Morata, if given another season, would do much better. But I think personally, he's thinking of his family and himself and he just wants to be somewhere that he's always liked. The next story I'm going to be talking about is Jeremy Berger. You guys know my favourite youth player. Me personally, I feel he is the best youth talent that we have produced at the club. And reports are coming out from Damasio stating that Sassuolo in Italy are interested in looking in to Jeremy Berger and also Nizar Kinsella who again before people start to laugh you know this guy is a Chelsea correspondent he's spoken to a lot of the players he's done a ton of interviews so it's not going to be crazy to think that he's speaking to some of these guys all their agents all their representatives getting an understanding of what's happening I mean put two and two together if you speak to players all the time do you not think that you're going to maintain that same contact but Nizar has reported that Raul Batis, Celta Vigo and Lille are other clubs interested in looking into Jeremy Boga. And I think they're very good clubs if I'm being honest. I'm looking at Real Batiste know, knowing that they do like to use a number 10 in their system. I think that could make sense. Lille, very young squad there in France as well. They're only going to get stronger. They did stay up. Potentially could be another great option as well. Boga is only 21 years old. I think really start judging him when he's 24 he's still got another three years he's still got a lot of time to really show his real abilities and real talents he just needs to find the right club where he can you know that's going to complement his skills but he can play in his best position i mean when burger was talking uh, in a recent interview about you know not wanting to go on a fourth loan spell and I'm going to be touching on this later on. He was saying that when he was playing under Harry Redknapp, he persuaded Boga to sign for Birmingham. He was playing as a number 10 and, you know, second support striker, which is his best position. And he was feeling very good. I mean, of course, throughout the interview, you could tell that he wasn't necessarily happy at being used out of position. But he was very diplomatic and he did state that, obviously, 
I learned to play in different positions and I was able to show my versatility. But in that same interview, as I was just saying earlier, Boga was saying that ideally he doesn't want to go on a fourth loan spell. He's been on three loans already. He wants that stability in his career. If you're a Chelsea youth player, you're going to look at the older guys like your Pia Zons, for example. You don't want to be in that same situation. You know, all the guys have a Chelsea WhatsApp group. You can tell that they communicate, they talk to each other. The older guys are giving advice to the younger guys as well. It's, it happens, you guys. Let's be serious. This is a football club. And ideally, because of this, Nazar was speaking about the possibility that Chelsea will look to exercise selling him with a buyback fee similar to what we've done with Nathan Naki, uh, Bertrand Chore, possibly with Kurt Zuma soon and with Jeremy Boga. And I think, to be honest, that's the best thing for him. I know, personally, I do know this. I have been told that he has been screwed over a lot by Chelsea, especially when it's come to loan destinations. It's sad, but most times it's come down to him going to the club that pays the money that Chelsea want. It's really not good at all, especially for someone that's been one of the best players in the youth team. Yes, maybe if you're Izzy Brown, I can understand if the club are going to be a bit blasé, even though it's still not right. But if you're Jeremy Boga, someone that was instrumental to the youth teams, then I'm not too sure. But me personally, I do feel that it's best that Boga does leave on a permanent buyback fee's good. Let him get that stability he deserves because this guy can be one of the best number 10s in Europe. Another story I want to talk about is Vesalic. Now, reports are coming out from Corriere della Sport that Fiorentina are looking into the possibility of bringing in Vesalic to Fiorentina. Uh, Bedell looks like he's leaving. They're looking for a replacement in midfield. Uh, Spartak Moscow haven't exercised their right to buy him after his loan spell. He only paid 21 games, four goals at the same time. At the same time, for me, he wasn't being used in his natural position. He is a box-to-box -box midfield player. Hearing reports that Fiorentina would like that anchor man replaced before Badel. You're looking at Pasalic. I'm not quite too sure, to be honest. But it's clear that he won't have any future at Chelsea. And as I said, expect a lot of these guys to be sold during the season. And you guys in the video, just speaking about a few of the young players that have left. Rhys James did join Wigan on loan for the season. Again, Wigan, I'm not too sure. They didn't really do well with Josh McEachran, but Reese James is one of the most promising right backs in the country. I don't know though about Wigan. Dujon Sterling. Dujon Sterling actually went to League One. He's going to be playing for Coventry for the season. Again, something else I'm not too sure about. And I just keep thinking, why didn't these guys get the loan move the season before? I mean, did they really need to spend another year at Chelsea? What did these guys really learn again in their final year? I'm not too sure. I kind of feel that if Dujon's going to be going to League One, he could have left last season. You know, these guys are 19 years old now. And, you know, you look at guys like Trevor Arnold and you just think, wow, this guy literally went from youth football straight to the first team England squad uh, in the Champions League final as well. And you're telling me that he is a much better player compared to Reese James and Sterling? No. If Sterling and Reese James were part of the Liverpool Academy, I guarantee that they would have been playing right back over Trevor Arnold if the roles have been swapped and reversed. Still, not the only ones who left. Trevor Chiloba went to join Ipswich Online again. I was hoping he was going to go to Germany. I kept hearing things of Britain watching Gladbach. It seemed like it didn't materialise in the end, or maybe they couldn't guarantee him first team football. Again, a bit disappointed. And uh, Panzo has left to join Monaco on a permanent 2.5 million. Fantastic. Panzo can play on the left as a defender. Brilliant. And again, expect more of these guys to leave. This is why I personally feel Chelsea are securing the loan moves straight away and not taking the piss and doing it right at the end. But you guys, that's going to end today's video. Please like, comment and subscribe. Five hundred likes for this video. Press the bell notification button as well. I'm the NEFC. This is Blue Lines TV. Signing out.